Paramahamsa Nityananda, a rare living incarnation, is named among the world's 100 most spiritually influential personalities today. Paramahamsa Nityananda has been placed alongside Dalai Lama, Nelson Mandela, Oprah Winfrey, Paulo Coelho and others by Mind Body Spirit, the world's top esoteric magazine from Watkins, London's oldest and largest bookstore. A yogi by birth, he has been expressing his power of enlightenment since birth. He has authored more than 500 books in Tamil and English. Translations of these books are available in 26 languages in Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, Hindi, Sanskrit, Gujarati, Oriya, Bengali, Marathi, French, Malay, Polish, Portuguese, Italian, German, Danish, Spanish, Russian and Chinese. He is also an exemplary speaker with over 10,000 hours of profound life solutions through his discourses, social services such as Annadan free medical care, free educational services with ashrams, schools, temples, hospitals established in more than 140 places around the world offering exceptional services. A powerful spiritual healer who has healed millions of people of diseases from migraine to cancer. A Kriya Yogi who has formulated Kriyas for physical health and mental well-being benefiting thousands. A living master who offers practical solutions for our everyday problems. He is the founder and spiritual head of Nityananda Dhyanapitam. A spiritual powerhouse who has revived the sacred Vedic tradition by establishing Vedic temples in places like Los Angeles, San Jose, Seattle, Toronto, Ohio, Oklahoma, Phoenix, St. Louis, Malaysia, Brazil, Paris, Guadeloupe, Dallas, New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, Calgary, Vancouver, Singapore and places in India like Bengaluru, Hyderabad, Tiruvannamalai. A spiritual guru for 10 million followers, an incarnation who transmits the highest spiritual energy through initiation, a contemporary yogi who has revived the Vedic science of yoga worldwide through thousands of yoga centers, an adept in Ashtamahasiddhi's mystical yogic powers who has effortlessly awakened the Kundalini of thousands and graced them with spiritual powers, a dynamic young guru who is an inspiration for for thousands of youngsters. India's most watched spiritual guru online, a beacon of spiritual light who has triumphed over the forces of religious terrorism and political persecution. Paramahamsa Nityananda is an eternal Kalpataru blessing the world with the boons of material abundance and spiritual enlightenment. He is the 293rd pontiff of the world's most ancient Hindu organization, Madurai Adinam. Sada Shiva Samaramba Jnana Sammanda Charya Madhyama Asmada Charya Varyanta Vande Guru Parampara It's a beautiful day, 70th anniversary of my first experience. Maybe I'll take few minutes to express exactly what happened. You 
You see, around the age of 10, I used to go and see this great master Annamalai Swami. He is a great enlightened being, one of the direct disciple of Bhagavan Raman Maharshi. He is the person who used to give bath to Bhagavan. Even when Bhagavan takes bath, he will be the person who touches his body and gives bath. Such a close disciple. One day, when he was giving bath, he writes in his memoirs, I thought, I am touching the body, just a normal body. He thought, you see, when you are too intimate with God, you can forget, you, you may, sometimes there is a difficulty, you may take it for granted. I am touching, after all, a normal body. What it is, everybody is worshipping this body. <laughs> everybody is feeling, he is God, he is God, he is Bhagavan. I am touching only normal body. He says, suddenly something happened. I don't know what happened. And Bhagavan touched me. Whether he read my mind or not, I don't know what happened. And I went into Samadhi. And that's all. After that, completely he stopped working. Not only stopped working, stopped doing, living normal way of life. He just started relaxing, settled down just near the ashram in one place. He sat. Just that one experience, one experience changed the whole life. He became enlightened. One of the great disciples, our enlightened disciples of Ramana Maharshi, I used to go and see him around the age of 10. He is a very nice elderly person. He was sitting and talking to the group of seekers. He was telling that we are not body and we are beyond um, suffering and pain and all those things. Naturally, I was not able to understand. How can he say that we are beyond suffering? If my mother beats me, I have pain. If my teacher shouts at me, I have a suffering. How can he say that we are beyond pain and suffering? Nitya Kriya, restoring Hatha Yoga to the world. A series of healing yogic processes revealed by Paramahamsa Nityananda to care and cure for diseases and disorders. Practice Nitya Kriya and awaken your Kundalini energy. To find out more, visit www.nityananda.org slash nitya kriyas. Life is teaching you, be intense. Be intense. Every moment life is teaching you. Life is opening new things to you. Please understand. With just this intensity, suddenly you will realize whole life is auspiciousness. Even the worst things which you think in your life, what we usually we think as worst thing, maybe losing money or losing the loved ones or their love or the life itself. These are the things you think is worst thing. When you intensely approach the life, you will realize even these things add some understandings and experience to you. Even these things add something to you. Suddenly you will see. Even these things are adding to you, enriching you. That intensity will make whole life as auspicious. Let me give you an incident from my own experience. When I was a young boy, somehow I got this idea, enlightenment is the ultimate. And Life should be lived only for that. Strong idea. Wherever I see a sadhu, a monk with his cloth, simply I'll start following them. I'll start following them. I'll be behind them. I'll be running behind them. Swamiji, please te teach me something, tell me something. I'll try to experiment whatever they say. Once I went to a great Swami, Annamalai Swami, is an enlightened person, 
Ramana Maharshi's disciple. I went and sat at his feet. I asked him, to tell something. He was telling me, he was talking to some of his disciples, he continued the conversation. Then I thought what he is talking is to me. He was telling very beautifully, we are beyond suffering, beyond pain, we are consciousness. When I heard these truths, Somehow it clicked with me, very strongly, clicked with me. When I went back to the house, I started th thinking continuously, how come, how come, he says, we are beyond pain, beyond suffering. And I also feel what he says is right. But when my mother beats me, I have pain. The school, the India, young age, it's do something wrong, parents will beat. And no 911 in India. You can't call 911 and all. And you have to just keep quiet or cry for 10 minutes, that's all. Nothing can be done. And I, I felt, anyhow, when, he, when she beats, when they beat the kids, they have pain. And even when I have I fall here, there, something. There is pain. How can he say we are beyond pain, beyond suffering? Then it was such a strong, intense research for me. I could not keep quiet. I took a knife and cut my thigh to see whether I have pain or not. See, Arjuna is very intelligent. When Krishna said, Nainan Chindanti Sastra, Nainan Takati Bhavagha. Means when Krishna said, the consciousness, soul cannot be cut by sword and burnt by uh, fire and killed by any weapons. He went and tried that science on others. <laughs> but unfortunately, I was not that fortunate, that intelligent. I tried that on me. Soul cannot be bound by pain and suffering. I tried that on me. Of course, naturally there was pain. And my family rushed me to the nearest dispensary. That guy put a stitch and everything. Still the mark is there. Very big cut. I did not even cut in a small way and so on. I just tried my best. <laughs> Anyhow, 13 stitches. 13 stitches, small boy, you see, so, very soft skin. I was using all the bad words which I learnt from my young age on that Swami. <laughs> all possible words. In India, there is a training center, every street. <laughs> see, every street, at the end of the corner of the street, there will be common tap, water tap. In every village. The common water tap will be there. The ladies will go and fetch water from the common well, common water tap or common well. Even if there is no crowd, because of the habit, those lady, ladies only after uttering those 20, 30 bad words, they will take the water. <laughs> there will be continuous fight for the water. So it's like a, a stotra. <laughs> Morning go to the <laughs> well or the <laughs> water tap and use all those words and bring water. So I learnt all the words. Whatever words I learnt, I started using on him. After two, three days when I was able to walk, first thing I did, I ran to him. See what you did? You said we will not have, we don't have pain, we don't have suffering. I went and tested it on me. Not only I had pain and suffering, now I have to rest for so many days. So much of pain. He just smiled and pulled me near and hugged me. Said, My son, just look inside from where the pain is rising, raising. The idea of pain is raising. Do this. 
I just started looking. After a few minutes, I saw that idea of pain disappearing. Not completely disappeared, start reducing. I opened my eyes and said, all right, these things are all okay, this meditation, all these things are okay. You could have taught me these meditations before I cut myself. Without giving these ideas that uh, we are beyond pain and suffering and all that. He told me very beautifully, I can say, this is my, this is the turning point in my life, this word. It just clicked. He said, my son, don't bother. Don't worry that you cut yourself to experiment. Don't worry. The intensity to experiment which you have is really worthy. Just keep that intensity alive. You will go beyond all pains. You will never have pains anymore in your life. Please understand. There was a very strong word. Still I remember. He said, the intensity to experiment, to live, to live. Many of you would have heard all these great ideas when you are young. Many of you would have heard. He said very beautifully, the intensity to experiment you will see, you will achieve the goal. Don't worry about it. This small pain is worthy. He said, even if you have cut your leg or hand, it is worthy. Don't worry. Because people give lives after lives for enlightenment. This one pain is nothing. But the intensity to experiment is worthy to have. Have that quality. That quality is worthy of this small pain. Please understand. That one strong click that is responsible for my enlightenment or whatever experience I had. With that one click, started contemplating, started meditating, started living these great truths. I saw the ultimate happening in the life just like that. The negative abhyasa is so powerful. It is such a strong thing. Any positive glimpse it will shake. Let me give you an experience about my own negative abhyasa. I think that will give you an opening. When I had this enlightenment experience, it, was, it completely shook me. Shook me. All my ideas about enlightenment disappeared. Just like when you meet me, all your ideas about enlightened master will disappear. I will be mind-boggling. You can't comprehend. You are fortunate if you just see me in a class and go away. No, really. You spend little time around me, all your ideas about enlightened master will disappear. So alive, so spontaneous, unimaginable, unable to put inside your frame. You will feel shaken. All my ideas about enlightenment disappear. And I was there in that field, in that field, filled. Maybe it took two and a half years, two and a half hours, sorry, two and a half days. It's neither two and a half hours nor two and a half years. It looked like a two and a half hours or two and a half years. It's chronologically two and a half days. When I started settling, first thing happened to me, I thought some ghost just possessed me. Because I never knew about enlightenment, that enlightenment will be like this. Some ghost, because the negative abhyasa starts taking over. Negative abhyasa is taking over. The mental groove is not able to hold that experience. So negative abhyasa is taking over. The other side, my mind started telling, don't go to that place again. I started thinking that place, that there is some ghost. Because I went and sat there, the ghost got hold of me. And I should never go to that place again. And that is the way I am supposed to go to my school every day. I will never go that way. After that, it took six months to go near that place for me. Started the negative abhyasa eh? taking over. Not only that, I started feeling all kinds of things. I think there was one Swami who was teaching me yoga and another one Swami who was teaching Vedanta. 
I thought, who knows what these guys are teaching me and where I am landing, what will happen to me. All kinds of apprehension, all kinds of fear and it is not standing, staying. When I went back and I asked that Mataji, when Mataji was there, she was teaching me little Tantra and Vedanta. I asked her, this is what happened? Is, am I possessed by ghost? She laughed and said, you are possessed by God. And she, all she told me, just be around me for a few days, nothing else. And she said, I'll cook and give you the food, eat and be around me. I asked, how can that help? You just be there, nothing else. But just eating that food and being around her, suddenly I saw my body is picking up the courage to leave that enlightenment. My brain is creating new grooves to leave that enlightenment. My system is falling in tune to leave that enlightenment. To leave that joy, to radiate that joy, I suddenly started feeling, I have a company. I have company. There are many people who lived what I am living, who went through what I am going through. You feel comfortable. You are not alone. That statement can be given only by Sangha, never by, even not even by Buddha. Please understand. Even I cannot give you that courage. Only Sangha can give you that courage. If I say, then you will say, no, 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 you are enlightened, you are in a different plane, don't compare you and us. You have all kinds of ideas. No. Sangha can give you that courage. Sangha can give you that confidence. Sangha can create that new brain grooves where positive abhyasa can happen. You can be again and again and again in that elevated consciousness, joy, ecstasy, bliss. You can raise yourself. Not only for spiritual enlightenment, even to live an integrated happy life, you need Abhyasa. You need Abhyasa. Even to live a happy life, I am not talking about enlightened life, even to live a happy life, you need Abhyasa. Because constantly, so many cyclones are happening inside you. Actually, just like a CNN weather channel, you need an internal weather channel. Today, there may be three tornado, two tsunami, <laughs> ten year quack. That is what is happening inside. Look, how many tsunamis, how many earthquakes, how many Katrinas, how many tornadoes happening? Constantly. You need positive abhyasa to handle even this weather, even these tornadoes. Positive abhyasa is a safe shelter where you are neither touched nor affected by these tornadoes, by these tsunamis, by this earthquakes, by these floods, by these disturbances, by these difficulties. You need to know the Abhyasa is the ultimate shelter and resort you can create for yourself. The positive Abhyasa is the ultimate shelter, ultimate resort you can create for yourself. That's the ultimate truth can happen to you. Please understand. When I went back to the master, all he said, I asked him, first thing, I had the fear. I thought I was possessed by a ghost. This Mataji, she told me, no, you are not possessed by a ghost, you are possessed by God. And she gave me the courage after a few days. That fear went away. What happened to me was wrong. That fear went away. Now the greed started. Oh God, it went away. How can I have it back? I rushed to this one great Swami, Annamali Swami. He is an enlightened disciple of Raman Maharishi. He told me only one word, this sutra, essence of this sutra, Abhyasa. Bring yourself back to that same mood, same space, again and again and again. Let your body be soaked 
let your body be processed by the consciousness. He told me, let it be cooked by the consciousness. Bring yourself back again and again and again to that same state, either by studying or by listening or by remembering or by meditating, whatever it takes. Nithyananda's Sacred Art Store, a storehouse of spiritual products from the Vedic culture. Find all your needs for a yogic body, Vedic mind, and end living. A one-stop shop for spiritual products and gifts. www.sacredartstore.com Or email us at sales at ngalleria.com Yesterday I was telling about an incident. I went to a master, Annamalai Swami Hill, and I cut my thigh. You heard that incident. After that, I started playing with what he taught me. From where the idea I raising? He told me, from where the pain is coming, just look inside. After the pain disappeared, he said, from where the idea, the person who experiences pain, Raise us, just look inside. I was looking, looking, looking very deeply and intensely. Maybe I can say two years or one and a half years. I was playing continuously with the technique, sometimes very seriously, very passionately. In a way, that thought has become my only thought. Continuously just having only that thought. Actually, that passion takes care that all other thoughts disappear except that thought. Now you need patience to relax even from that thought. Understand? Intensity is combination of passion and passions. You have to have intensity, the passion, so that all other thoughts disappear. Now you need to have patience even to unclutch from that thought, that one thought. So almost everything else has disappeared except that one thought from where the thoughts are raising. One day, I was sitting the foothills of Arunachala, that place is called Pavadakundru. I have spoken elaborately on this experience in a discourse called Living Enlightenment. It's in YouTube. If you find time, maybe you can spend a little time with that discourse. I have spoken elaborately step by step how the experience happened. Today we don't have that much of time. But at least I'll share the essence. When I was sitting, I saw this one thought that from where thoughts are raising. One funny thing is, because I was constantly working with that thought, from where thoughts are raising, but unable to find the source, that, that thought has become a strong pain memory for me. The moment I remember to find the seeking, the source, the moment I remember I should start seeking, from where thoughts are raising, because of my past failures, immediately I will be depressed. It will be so much of pain. I will sit, no, 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 I will do every day the same thing, but I will never realize. I will just walk out with a deep failure. Today also the same thing it is going to be. By and by, it became a uh, sort of a pain memory. Strong pain. I can neither drop that habit of seeking from where thoughts are raising because the intense yearning for enlightenment is there nor I am able to discover so what to do it's like a almost married <laughs> in Indian village system in Indian village system still marriage the divorce is a taboo you can't divorce and Funny thing, 
Sanskrit, we don't have a right word for divorce because the concept did not exist. The Vedic marriage, you commit till the fire is there in your stomach, means till you are alive. Anyhow, it's almost like a marriage. You can't escape. You can't escape. It is there. And you can neither swallow nor spit it out. And neither I'm able to stop seeking nor feeling joy to do that. It became pain. Actually, when, at some part of your life, your own spiritual practice will become pain. Even the thought will become pain. Because you think, oh, even if I do, many times I tried, nothing works out. But I am not able to stop also. What to do? What to do? Just you have to do. It became a passion, but the patience was not there. It became kind of a strong pain memory. So I was sitting at the foothills of Arunachala. It was a full moon day. Vaigasi month. Exactly one month from tomorrow. Tomorrow is Purnima. Tomorrow is Chitra Purnima. And Vaigasi Purnima, the next month. Purnima. Evening. It was a beautiful time. I enjoy nature always. Even now, hill, water body, means ocean or river, is my favorite place. If I know in that city, ocean is there, at least once a day, I will spend a little time with ocean or with hills. It's my life. It's my passion. So I was just sitting with open eyes, sun was setting, moon was rising. I was not even meditating. Usually I have only two, two thought. One, the thought, who am I, I should find out. The other, the thought, even if I seek, I am not going to achieve. That pain. Only these two, two thoughts will be jumping. Binary code like a 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Only these two will be there. And both are the same source. Suddenly, I don't know how it happened. Both the thoughts, the passion lost its power over me because of the deep passions I experienced, a deep relaxation I experienced in that evening moon, when the moon was rising. The deep passions I experienced, the deep passive feeling I experienced, the relaxed feeling I experienced, the settled feeling I experienced, it's like in Indian villages, I have seen, they will use a big bamboo stick to burn dead bodies. After they burn everything, everything is burnt, they will throw that stick also into the same fire. Same way, I used this one thought, who am I, to seek the source of the thought, to burn all other thoughts. Now, this thought needs to be burnt. This stick is there in my hand, giving me suffering and pain, not getting down, not coming down. There is a beautiful story of Brahma Kapal. Shiva removed the head of Brahma, one head, because Brahma was very egoistic. He was very egoistic. He removed one head of Brahma. It's a very mythological, beautiful description. Uh, in our tradition, we say Brahma was, is able to uh, see in all four direction and the up, fifth head. He had four heads, four direction, and one head towards up, the above. It means he had the ability to see all 360 degree this side and this side means a pure consciousness. But for some reason, when he became egoistic, 
the ability to see this side 360 degree last means the last enlightenment. That is what is meant by the word Shiva removed the one head. But a funny story, very nice story, very deep meaning. The story says that head caught, caught in Shiva's hand. Shiva's hand. And whatever is put in that head, that kapal, that eats it away. So nothing was left for Shiva. Same way, see that head, everything that head eats, nothing was left for Shiva. That kapal has become a big torture for Shiva. Same way, all the other thoughts are burnt, eaten by this one thought. But this one thought is not leaving me. It becomes a big torture. But somehow, when that patience, I can say in a way I got completely fed up with this whole thing. Seeking and unable to find with this whole thing. So I just sat in that moonlight, moon raising. For a few seconds, my being forgot to seek, forgot to create the thought, the passion of seeking. It just entered the space of passions. Suddenly, at that moment, click. Something clicked. Because of my passion, already I raised my frequency to a different level. Now my passions my relaxed being, just I relaxed into that frequency, something clicked, suddenly something broke, opened into my being. How I feel, how all of you feel, alive inside your skin, the stray, same strong feeling that I am alive, I started experiencing even outside my skin with the whole, with the whole thing, it just whole thing, the tree, plant, hill, stones, the earth and the sky, with everything, suddenly I started feeling, I am alive, I am vibrant, I am living it. As long as that passion and passions was there inside me, the intensity, that experience stayed. But after two and a half days, the passion took over the passions. The passion to hold on to that experience took over the passions to relax into that experience. Please understand, whenever you want to hold your bliss, you will miss it. Bliss means what? Choicelessness is bliss. When you choose bliss, you have chosen suffering. If your hands are open under water, river will be flowing. You will be holding the river. The moment you hold the river, you try to hold it. What happens? You have only empty hands. If you are with open hands, breeze is blowing. The moment you hold, you have only empty hands. So, the moment you choose bliss, you choose suffering. Choice is suffering, choicelessness is bliss. The moment my passion took over the passions, it disappeared. It just disappeared. Again, it took more than 10 years for me completely tune, polish my being and relax with a deep passion and passions. When that experience happened again, never left, it just stayed. It just stayed and started radiating through this body. 
Kailash, the abode of Shiva. Explore the peak of mystery with Paramahamsa Nityananda, a living enlightened master to the most sacred pilgrimage destination on earth. Added bonus, a visit to Madurai is added to the itinerary of the full trip with Swamiji after returning from Kailash. For more information or to register, visit n-yatras.nithyananda.org or write us at n.yatras at nithyananda.org. It was a very deep experience. If it is just a word or imagination, it will not make such a big impact on your inner space. It was a strong conscious experience. See, now you know you are inside your skin. Anything you will listen as long as it does not disturb you. If something disturbs your life, naturally you know how to protect yourself. Because you are alive inside, it is your conscious experience. How many people may teach you that you are not a body? You will listen, but you will not allow them to work on you. <laughs> because your conscious experience is your body. In my case, I am this whole existence become my conscious experience. That is why my, I started living according to that. People feel surprised sometimes. Why I lived such a strong, intense life in that age? It's very difficult, unimaginable. It's unimaginable for you because it is not your conscious experience. It's such a simple thing for me because feeling the whole cosmos is me has become conscious experience. It was a very solid experience. Then late night, by the time I was able to move the body a little bit, it became late night, somehow I came down. After settling into the body a little bit, I thought that some ghost has possessed me. I got, <laughs> I got frightened, <laughs> something has happened, even though there is a deep joy inside, but I do not know what has really happened, first time, something new, some ghost has possessed me or not, I do not know. I started thinking in that way and went to that Mataji Kuppamal and told her what happened. She just laughed and said that you are not possessed by ghost, you are possessed by God. And <laughs> she gave me the courage to live with it, to accept that experience and she supported me. For three days I was not able to eat anything. I think that is why so much of food is today offered. <laughs> Three days I was not able to uh, eat anything. So such an intense ecstasy. Because if I see the food, that is also alive and this is also alive. I am sitting inside the food. What is there to put something into something? And it is there. Everything is alive. So how will you put something into something? You won't put your finger into your mouth and chew. So how to put something into something? Everything is life. Hmm? It was such a solid experience. It took three days. She used to put little, little, somehow she will put little food in the mouth and try to force me to eat, but it will come out and this way it happened and she took care. After uh, three days, body became little settled. Then, even though she told me that I am possessed by God and supported me and helped me, she encouraged and gave me courage. Even though she supported that fear, I never went near the track again for next six months. <laughs> I will never go near that area. And after a few days, I caught hold of my close friend, still he is there, and took him to the temple. The temple, I told him, I want to tell you some important thing. And he said, okay. We went to one corner where no people come. Not much visitors come. He was sitting next to me and told him, hey, see, for 
But from that day, something happened to me in the hill. I am able to see all 360 degree now. I can see everything, what, what is happening in front of me and back side, every side. He start, first he took me, he just started making fun of me, fool, you are talk, something you are talking and all those things. He did not take me seriously. I told him, you see, if you want, you can check, you see, behind there is a tree, na? ant is going, I can see, you see. It was a big shock for him. And I told very clearly behind the tree and what all is going on, who is crossing and what color dress he is wearing without turning my head. And <laughs> ant raised, climbing the tree and that small, small insects. I told, that fellow got frightened. First shock for him. I told him, if you want, you check. He had a Indian rupee, coin, in his packet. He picked up the coin and he said, I will show behind your head. You tell me which side I am showing, head or tail. And we had that game. I told clearly, for 10, 12 times he checked. I told very clearly. That completely shook that guy. I told him, you also go and sit on the truck, you will have this. <laughs> no, because still I was not very clear why it happened and what it what happened and all those things. All I know is now I have, I can see everything <laughs> and <laughs> it is very joyful, like a bliss fever. It was a bliss fever, you see. And I told him, you also go and sit on the truck. I will tell you where it happened. I won't come. You go and, <laughs> and you will also be able to see like this everything. And that fellow slowly started, no, 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 I will, now I have to go to uh, school, uh, house, I have to do my homework. I said, no, no, sit, I will tell you what all to be done. And he was telling, no, 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 you, I have to go now, I am uh, 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 in some urgent work. I cut out of his hand. No, first, because uh, I thought that he, he is going to escape. And he started like, no, 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 I am feeling uh, uh, like going to bathroom, leave me a hand. <laughs> and I caught hold of him. I, I, was, I was trying to catch, uh, catch him and no, no, sit. First listen the whole thing. And I could see very clearly when I caught, when I was trying to catch him without running, I could see very clearly, body may be two, but I am alive in both the bodies. Both the bodies I am alive, but the poor guy, he can't understand, he can't understand. Then suddenly, hit me, what is this? I feel like I am having two bodies. And, but uh, he is completely frightened that I could see all the direction and he can't imagine. Uh, <laughs> till yesterday, I, I was his friend and today I can <laughs> do all these things. And he just said that leave me now, now I have to go to bathroom and after going to bathroom I will come back. Because usually when you get frightened, first thing you will feel like going to bathroom only. This fellow ran and uh, whatever he did, one or two, I don't know, but he ran away, never came back. And I was sitting there, sitting there, thinking he will come back. And anyhow, uh, after uh, a few hours, I understood that he, this guy is not going to come back. I went back to home, still now he describes his experience and Swamiji was catching me not to run, trying uh, to make him sit. That time I felt that something was happening inside my body. He says that uh, I am the first person who received energy session. <laughs> he came and did our NSP. <laughs> um, in NSP I gave energy session. He said that uh, and the same thing I felt that time, the same thing I felt I had experienced that time. So, first energy version. <laughs> and it was fun. Hmm? It changed the whole perspective of life, our experience about life and the idea about me and life and God, everything was changed. Here, here, my idea about God, me, world, everything was totally different. Now, my idea about the self, Jiva, the Jagat world and God, Ishwara, totally different. 
and yesterday i was sitting and talking with my ashramites i was just seeing how this experience happened why this experience happened see there are so many boys who are cutting their thighs or hands or <laughs> legs in so many ways but all of them are not having <laughs> spiritual experience why did this happen i can say one important reason my whole inner space was ripe ready for this small technique to just awaken or open it because constantly i used to be in that high frequency of feeling connected with the masters without even my awareness see who inspires or impresses you they become hero of your inner space in the young age especially these great masters they have impressed me so much in every situation internally i'll calculate how this master will behave at this moment let me behave that same way for example if i had some fear i'll remember how anomaly swami will, will uh, face this fear he won't bother he is an enlightened let me also be like that the inner space was so inspired and impressed by these great masters every step in my life i'll think how he will behave let me do that for example if i see some sweet or something my brothers and all will jump hey i want this chair i want that chair i'll think how anomaly swami will behave he won't bother he will keep it in one corner it will be there let me also be like that i don't know how this system got developed into me so much inspired impressed by that masters the inner space was so pure also young age no other heroes only these masters are the heroes and every step i used to think how he will behave let me behave like that how he will do let me do like that i used to go for a uh, circumambulation of the hill to go around the hill it's a 16 km in the late night when i have little fear i'll think how anomaly swami will behave he won't bother about fear then let me also be like that let me tell you one incident really it happened a heavy rain maybe uh, around the time when i had my first experience i was going for a circumambulation of the hill i had the fear heavy rain and thunders lightning immediately i thought how oh, anomaly swami will be here he won't bother he is just he will just walk let me also do the same way and i was walking through the traditional crematorium where people are cremated in uh, india cremated and buried in india both are done in same place burial and cremation both are done in same place i was walking through that because when you go around the hill you are supposed that path goes through that crematorium of arunachala the city's uh, cremation ground suddenly i saw one dog biting something and eating when i uh, went near the dog was trying to bark to drive me out first thing the when the fear came i saw that i thought how oh, anomaly swami will be, behave he won't bother just let me go i started moving anyway when i started moving the dog got frightened and ran away when i went near only i saw it was a dead body which was not completely buried came out in the rain and it is lying on the road <laughs> and just imagine 12 13 year old boy midnight dead body without head <laughs> because the head is in the mouth of the uh, dog <laughs> and but the moment the fear started it did not even reach my being completely the shock fear stroke did not even happen completely the moment 
Even the first thoughts started coming. The awareness was so intense. I thought, how anomaly Swami will behave now? He will just walk around and go. Just walk around and go. I went, that's all. <laughs> that's all. Just I took a bypass, detour, walked. Did not even bother to turn back and see. Just walked. The fear stroke did not reach my whole body. The fear stroke which was the, like a pebble which start, started or which was about to start did not even open up and reach my body. The heat or that shivering or that shaking was not there in the body. Just it's died. It's not there. Intensely, the whole conscious inner space was ready. That is the reason the small, just a small punch or a small inspiration was able to put me into that experience. That's what I call living enlightenment. When you live enlightened master's body language, you live enlightenment. Whenever any thought, any thought comes into my body or into the space, first thing I will think, how he will behave. Naturally, this will not be there. Then forget about it. Forget about it. Anything, whether it is related to cloth or food or anything, if I feel little lazy to meditate or to walk, I will think, how anomaly Swami will think now? how he will handle this situation. Naturally, he will not bother about this laziness. He will sit up and get up and sit and meditate. Do that. That's all. So, he became the scale. These masters became the scale or the inner space just constantly from morning till night. Morning till night, constantly they became the life center. I asked him once, uh, Swamiji, that uh, I saw Arnamale, uh, the Arunachaleshwara in dream. Do you also see him in the dream? He said, no, I don't have any dream. You don't have dream? Then how can I have dream? That night I said, no dream. Arnamale Swami will not have dream. Then how can I have dream? <laughs> no dream. You will be surprised. That night, when some dream started happening, I Clearly inside the dream I am saying, no, Anamali Swami doesn't have a dream, then how can I have a dream? Dream disappeared. Just dream disappeared. <laughs> the inner space was so thorough, so innocent, so straight, direct. It just happened. Hmm? It just happened. Even if I feel cold or anything, I will remember how he will behave. He does not bother. He will not bother. Then do not bother. Over. There was no further questions, arguments inside. The biggest problem for a seeker is, I know it is right, but I am struggling. You are dead. You are dead. Over. Over. You will neither achieve this nor achieve that. Earlier you die, better for you and the planet Earth. Over. If somebody says, then nothing can be done by you. Nothing will be done. Then what will you do? Because you will be talking this, you will be stuck with this one idea for Janmas. This is what we call Karana Sarira, giving reason. Understand? I know what Swamiji is talking is right, but I am not able to. Means what? Caught in Karana Sarira. You will never be able to get out of this layer unless you are, you just take a strong step and put your foot down. Anybody, be very clear, just look back. Look into yourself. If you are caught in this layer, be very clear. Nobody can save you. Nobody can save you. You may take today's my message. Do not be stuck in that layer. Anywhere you are stuck, okay. 
anywhere you can get stuck nothing wrong not in that layer not in that layer that is what i call evil see ramana knows very clearly sita is his own daughter ramana knows but he says i am not able to control then what happens over see ravana is nothing but a schizophrenia that is why 10 phases if a schizophrenia one phase one line one part of him is so devoted to shiva and one part of him is filled with lust to sita one part of him arrogance and uh, violence is a schizophrenia that's all if you are stuck in this concept i know what swami ji is talking is right but i can't do you are ravana done nothing can be done even if you worship shiva shiva can't save you ramana is a great shiva bhakta you understand shiva is not able to save him worshiping shiva did not save him is a great shiva bhakta he built a huge temple in trigonamalai in sri lanka there is a big temple trigonamalai he brought the uh, shivan worship integrated devotion is the devotion schizophrenic devotion is not devotion understand it is ravana bhakti if you say i know it is right but i am not able to i am not able to get to that get that i am not able to get there over the reason for my first experience is i never had the thought in my inner space if annamalai swami will does i will do over nothing else that's all any thought comes up inside how will annamalai swami will respond for this thought how he will respond how he will respond he will not have this then forget about it then that is not mine over take this as a message this is the message for you you all understand in any situation just remember how swami ji will behave how swami ji will react how swami ji will face this situation simply you will see new door opens this is this is what i call living enlightenment understand you don't need anything else this one is enough even while you were sitting if thoughts are coming if swami ji is just sitting what he will what will be going on inside him naturally silence then why are you thinking silent over <laughs> nothing else that's all your mind will if your mind says no no i know it is true but i can't do this it's too much then you think if swami ji's mind says like this how he will behave you would have finished the mind that moment <laughs> that's all nothing else that's all just be very clear carry this one message maybe you can take this one message and let this message become life into you the message of living enlightenment see uh, understand the age of from the age of 10 of course around the age of 10 only i was inspired and impressed by him that was the time i started but i didn't even know it's a meditation technique or it's a technique or all those things just it started how he will behave how annamalai swami will behave for this situation because many time in the house my brothers or uh, family will if they start fighting for something some share these that and i'll think how annamalai swami will behave he won't even bother forget about it let them have that's all because actually this is what i call relationship with master relationship with master is not just doing some puja or uh, putting some flowers or worshiping him once in a while no being thoroughly impressed by him anything comes up fear or insecurity or greed or anger anything comes up just see how he will behave simply it will disappear it will just disappear 
a simple understanding living enlightenment simple understanding enough it will disappear nothing else is needed carry this one message carry this one message see the ordinary relationship your relationship with master many time i used to tell people relationship strong feeling connected with master is enough you don't need any other technique that means this is what this is what not just your ordinary relationship your ordinary relationship you don't you neither try to understand me nor try to imbibe just it is there just it is there and that is not, i can't even call that as a relationship it's a regular ordinary thing feeling connected with master means just living him living master when you live the master only then you feel connected to him only then you are expanding only then something is happening in you otherwise you are ravana see ravana's nine head means ten head means what schizophrenia that's what different phases different phases of him only is called schizophrenia sometimes he behave nicely sometimes he behave rudely sometimes with lust sometimes with worshiping mood that's why they put him all the phases they describe him like a cartoon so many phases integrate no karana no more being ramana <laughs> and just let the whole body and mind imbibe the energy and spirit inspiration of master that's all is the message few days before one of our gurukul child he fell and broke his hand he was immediately brought to me i asked him do you have pain the child has been taught such a clear truths from the language he says he is not even saying i am he is telling his name and saying he is looking into the place and seeing is there any pain He is concentrating. Actually, his parents are shaken. It is not a joke to talk all these great truths at those moments. He is feeling shy. Now I tell you, when I saw that. i was feeling bad that he broke his hand that is secondary but i was so happy when i went to annamalai swami after having the medical aid you see first time when i went he said you are not the body and then i went and cut myself and tried of course i had the pain and i was taken to the hospital and they did all that stitching and everything but one good thing i went through the whole thing with awareness when i went back he told me eh hey, it's okay one cut is worthy of the clarity you are having the inspiration you have to experiment with the truths that is thousand times more valuable and costly than one small cut you created for yourself when i understood that how i felt happy i felt the same way one fracture is nothing it is worthy for the clarity you have now i know for sure now that child will evolve as enlightened being because this idea being inserted into your bio memory and comes out during actually his hand was hanging separately please understand it's a complete fracture not a airline crack it's a complete fracture he was not able to handle his parents are holding the child he was not able to move his hand as he wants one mistake we did small mistake taking him to the regular hospital where doctors have put the fear of pain any of that we can remove it now that's different we should have our own hospital where the doctors also feel these truths 
they should be they should give medical care it's not that we should not give medical care but we should tell pain is nothing it's nothing it's just a story do you really have pain now actually when i asked him he says he doesn't have pain he is afraid pain may come because doctors are saying see the internal happening has become external to the child already pain is the fourth layer internal happening please understand which is happening in the subtle body today in nsp we will be working on pain only pain only what you guys may have after this process the child is having and the age spontaneously see even after today's process only when you go through sincerely you will have this kind of an understanding and then you need to practice for this to become your bio memory but the child fortunately i tell you in tiruvannamalai thousands of kids are born and all of them are provided by ambians but only one or two becomes nityananda who catches it because all the ambiance is provided as an accident not as a planned incident here i am trying to provide all the opportunity as a planned incident i tell you i'll create at least few thousands of nityanandas out of our gurukul out of our gurukul i'll plan, i'll create at least few thousands i saw how the child went through the whole thing what's his age ma six just six even when i went through i was not six i was i think 10 when i had i cut myself surely i was not 6 at least i think 10 10 or 11 maybe it just before maybe 6 months or one year before the enlightenment experience at the age of 12 i had before the enlightenment experience at the age of 6 the child is very clear about externalizing all the internal things parents are shaken because for them even the child is internal but for the child even his own suffering is external i was feeling bad that he broke his hand that is different but inside was so joyful wow our system is working let you all achieve experience live express radiate share and explode in eternal bliss nityananda nityananda dhyana peetam nityananda nagar of mysore road biradi bangalore 562109 contact 09742203311 www.nityananda.org www.youtube.com/lifeblissfoundation welcome to inner awakening the most powerful personal transformation retreat you could ever experience in just 21 days thousands are already experiencing the shortest route to constantly high energy levels visible anti aging healing of chronic diseases fulfilling relationships and higher states of consciousness what is the secret behind this transformation kundalini means the inner potential energy once it is awakened opens the different doors for the conscious experience in you i can say which is a master key for all extraordinary spiritual experience
This extraordinary program is conducted personally by Paramahamsa Nityananda in the vibrant atmosphere of Nityananda Dhyanapitam Ashram. Open yourself to the benefits of Nitya Yoga and practical meditation. Experience physical and mental healing. Discover simple ways to handle life with success. Above all, enjoy individual darshan and blessings from Paramahamsa Nityananda every day. Take 21 days for yourself and carry home the transformation of a lifetime.